How do you work with a burnt out pursuer who has reached emotional exhaustion over trying to put effort into the relationship? Yeah, burnt out pursuers are um, clinically distressing because on that process of separation anxiety, the point in the process where a pursuer becomes burnt out is clinically relevant in terms of detaching and leading to ending the relationship or divorce. And so burnt out pursuers worry as EFT clinicians who are working so hard on the relationship's behalf. One of my burnt out pursuers referred to herself as crispy. We would scale her degree of crispiness. And I said, help me know what led to your heart becoming crispy. Mm -hmm. Unprocessed pain compacts in the heart, right? It hardens the heart. It makes the heart crispy. So unprocessed pain, we just layer it in our hearts and push it down, push it down, push it down to make space because the pain keeps happening. It hardens our hearts. It makes our hearts hard. It makes our hearts crispy. And we start detaching which is agonizing for a pursuer who's comfortable doing anything but detaching. Pursuers end up finding themselves disengaging. Their longings get go dormant. Their longings get buried. They find themselves pulling away because it no longer helps to knock on their partner's door. The partner is still with us and it's still couple therapy, but sometimes we can't assess if the burnt out pursuer still has love for their partner until we unpack some of the pain. And that's my job to increase my role as that person's temporary attachment figure because I'm holding the pain. The partner's not ready yet to even come close to the pain. Mm -hmm. So as I build rapport in the first few sessions, how would it be to share that pain? We need to unpack your pain, the pain that's made your heart hard or crispy or burnt out. And as we start unpacking it, we'll be listening for what else is coming alive emotionally. Love can come back alive. The love that went dormant, the love that got submerged, can, when it has more space in the heart, it's interesting to then track. Now that your heart feels less crispy, help me know what other emotions are filling in. So you're the therapist as a temporary attachment figure then you are going to come close to the burnt out pursuer's pain. The partner can't yet. So you are the one that does that. Number two, you're going to want to find what was the trigger? Was it when he did this or she did that? Number three, track the crispiness. So track the burnt out, right? Crispy is a synonym for burnt out. Yeah. Scale it because over the first handful of sessions, if it's not shifting, if it's not decreasing, then that becomes a clinical issue. So if the person is like crispy at an eight, three months later, crispy at an eight, there's a problem. Yeah, there's something else happening and maybe they're ambivalent. Maybe they lost those loving feelings. Maybe they feel immobilized for other reasons. You know, who knows? It could be lots of things. And even three months, when you say crispy as an eight, three months later, three months is a long time for both partners to hover clinically working towards unpacking the pain that led to the crispiness and not having the crispiness decrease. Partners will be getting hopeless by then. Clinically, you just want to be scaling and tracking the crispiness to make sure it's decreasing. And if it's not decreasing, then you want to have that process conversation. You probably want to get some good EFT supervision to what can I offer this couple? How do they make sense of the lack of decrease of crispiness? Maybe the triggering events continue to happen. Yes. Even when someone is really burnt out, it's possible that the love can come back alive because unprocessed pain will block feelings of love. Yeah. So to to just know that, so if someone says, I'm not in love with him, I just love him, Mm -hmm. you don't really know what's there yet until you begin to unpack that pain. Yeah, because pain has an element of threat in it for the human nervous system, the brain will prioritize the threat. And it will squeeze out the love because love at this point is a luxury. Right. Because our nervous systems have to keep, we got to address the pain. We got to address the pain. We got to address the pain. It will get intrusive and preoccupied. Yeah. And so the, the do I love or not is like, I don't even know. I, there's no bandwidth left. Yeah. If the withdrawer is not ready to take in the pain and distress of the burnt out pursuer, what are we doing with the withdrawer? Validating him or her, talking about your role as a temporary attachment figure, still doing some of the early steps of EFT, still doing the tango with the withdrawer, but in little bits, because we really, in little bits, just to certainly continue building rapport with both partners and to help the withdrawer feel heard and take up space. But until the pursuer is less burnt out, we don't want to ask the withdrawer to be vulnerable or open up until we can get the pursuer less burnt out. But then there's a point where the withdrawer might be able to offer 
some emotion that helps the pursuer's heart get softer. And so you pay attention to your withdrawer. How withdrawn are they? Yeah. And what are they feeling? And could we make more space for that emotion that they have in the room? Because that could start being the antidote to the crispiness of their partner's heart. As we're staying with the unprocessed pain with the pursuer, we validate the withdrawer. For example, I know this is, this is hard to hear. This, I know this is hard on your heart. You have pain too. Here's what I'm doing. Here's why I'm doing it but I haven't forgotten about you. Yes. And then as maybe as the pursuer talks about events that harden their heart, the withdrawer might, I might, I can hear myself turning to the withdrawer and saying, I imagine you have probably a different experience. I will come back to you to make space for your, to know your narrative, to know what you've gone through. Okay. okay. So it's a, it's a balancing act while slightly more than slightly prioritizing the burnt out pursuer, because if we can't get that burnt out pursuer engaged in the course of treatment, that's when it becomes so clinically distressing because we don't have a good way to bring them back without the pursuer letting us come alongside and hold their pain. Right. 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 Well, and the second one is that even though you don't want the, the withdrawer to get too vulnerable, you don't want them to be, you know, wide open and then the pursuer not be responsive to that. So you're careful about that, but also the withdrawer's vulnerability can sometimes antidote the crispiness of the pursuer. So yeah. that's the, so that those are the two main things. Yeah. Yeah. And so one quick example comes to mind is a withdrawer who had an affair is coming in pleading and super vulnerable and wide open with their burnt out pursuing partner who's not ready to take in the withdrawer's vulnerability and regret and I'm so sorry and give me a chance and I love you more than anything and and so it's it's just like keeping it as balanced as possible, knowing they're in very different places. Yes. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.